and all so i'll be taking a couple of lectures for you guys and uh, first will be about uh, free radicals and antioxidants that i'll take today and the next will be xenobiotic metabolism so today i'll be posting this lecture and uh, maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow i'll be posting xenobiotic metabolism and uh, after uh, going through these slides please read text and uh, there is there are few questions at the end of the lecture please go through them try, try writing them and come back with your doubts tomorrow afternoon i'll schedule a doubt clearing session tomorrow afternoon so for this lecture the these are the competencies which will be covered bi 7.6 and bi 7.7 for uh, this lecture the my specific learning objectives will be that you should be able to describe what are free radicals their classification and sources of their generation you should be able to enlist important antioxidants what are the various cellular defenses against free radical injury and what is their mechanism of action and you should be able to describe and discuss certain pathological conditions which are caused by imbalance of oxidative and antioxidant levels in human body okay so in this figure do you see a fulcrum here and uh, on two sides there is a load of reactive oxygen species and reactive nitrogen oxygen species and on this side the one which is little lighter here is cellular defenses against oxidative stress now what is this oxidative stress oxidative stress or oxidative damage these are two interchangeably used terms it is a tissue damage caused by oxygen radicals and um, now this is uh, when your cellular defense mechanism cellular defenses are lighter than your free radicals so that is when oxidative stress happens so what are these cellular defense mechanism about which we'll talk about in detail these are your antioxidant uh, enzymes and certain antioxidants the, uh, those could be vitamins or minerals or certain miscellaneous biomolecules now there are uh, basically antioxidants are factors that protect against oxygen radical damage so free radicals are oxidants and the molecules which act against them or protect against them are antioxidants i have enlisted few disorders that are associated with the free radical injury diabetes cerebrovascular disorders reperfusion injury seen in myocardium multiple sclerosis emphysema and uh, retro plantal uh, retro lentil fibroplasia seen in lens of eye preeclampsia associated with pregnancy parkinson disease rheumatoid arthritis male infertility and aging minded increased oxidative stress has been found to be the most acceptable theory for aging so let's understand what is a radical and what is a free radical a radical is a molecule that has a single unpaired electron in an orbit on the other hand free radical it's a chemical species that has a unpaired electron or a single electron in the outermost orbit and it is capable of independent existence and they are highly reactive molecular species with an unpaired electron that means 
they are always in want of an electron or they want to give this electron and become stable so they persist for only a very short time that is of the order of uh, 10 raise to power minus 9 to 10 raise to power minus 12 seconds before they collide with another molecule and either they abstract or donate an electron from the neighboring molecule to complete their own orbitals or in order to achieve stability they do this now do you think free radicals are normally produced in our body ponder over this if it, something is like uh, okay imagine uh, there is a factory in which you put in some raw material to get a product Certainly, it is not the situation that the amount of raw product that you put in, you get the same amount of product made. There are certain uh, byproducts also made, or certain amount of uh, your raw material will be spent or will be wasted in generation of energy or noise making or wear and tear of the machinery that will be lost. So, it is our body is almost like that. We are putting in fuel in the form of uh, let's say lipids, proteins, carbohydrates and they are being burned, they are being oxidized, they are being oxidatively, uh, they are being used in uh, uh, as a source of uh, electrons in oxidative phosphorylation in energy generation. So just like that, we as a car engine doesn't have 100% uh, efficiency, our body doesn't have 100% efficiency. So some amount, uh, there is some leakage of electrons in the electron transport chain. So that is how free radicals are generated in body. And mind it, they do lead to oxidative stress in the body, but certain physiological functions also are served by free radicals and they help in fighting infections. We will see in subsequent slides how do they how are they actually what is their role in the body okay talking about transition metals iron copper they exist in our body and they have single electrons in orbitals but they are usually not considered free radicals why if you remember from our last series of lectures they are usually bound to proteins in the cells or if they are present in an enzyme they are they are uh, present in one oxidative stress oxidative state they can't they they really don't change their valency like that and they are relatively stable as such in proteins and they do not initiate chain reactions moving on to the next slide what are reactive okay before uh, uh, telling you what are ROS I must tell you that uh, a free radical is designated by uh, its symbol and you put a superscript dot on it that signifies or that designates a free radical and examples include superoxide anion hydrogen peroxide hydroxyl radical and peroxyl radical, hypochlorous acid, HOCl, nitric oxide and peroxy nitrite. So these are few examples of uh, free radicals. Now coming to reactive oxygen species, reduction of oxygen by 4-1 electron steps is being shown in this figure here. So if you see there are 1, 2, 3 and 4. 4 sequential reductions in which every time a single electron is being provided. So the 4 1 electron reduction steps for oxygen generate superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl radical plus water. Now these 4 
molecules are actually reactive oxygen species so how do you define them they are oxygen containing compounds that are highly reactive free radicals or compounds that are readily converted to these oxygen free radicals in the cell for example if they attack uh, organic acid that that could generate a free radical that will also be called a ros so in the first step superoxide radicals are produced when a single electron is transferred to oxygen and mind it it is both an anion and a free radical a very highly reactive species in further step hydrogen peroxide or h2o2 this is the half reduced form of oxygen and it has accepted two electrons and is classically not an oxygen radical now there is a statement oxygen is a bi radical so think over it why it is called a bi radical search over it ponder over it and come back tomorrow oxygen is a bi radical now uh, what i just told you in last slide that uh, there are functions of free radicals in body that's that's how that's why they are produced in the body so first is cellular signaling we'll talk about nitric oxide you have already uh, we have already started about nitric oxide before uh, if you remember amino acid metabolism so we'll talk about nitric oxide and nitric oxide synthase and how at low concentrations nitric oxide serves as a neurotransmitter or as a hormone then we'll talk about cellular defense mechanism in this uh, i'll talk about formation of free radicals during phagocytosis and inflammation okay so coming to intracellular signaling nitric oxide is an oxygen containing free radical that like oxygen is both essential to life and toxic also no has a single electron and therefore it binds to other compounds that contain single electrons such as ferric ions as a gas nitric oxide diffuses through the cytosol and lipid membranes and into cells and as i told you earlier that at low concentration nitric oxide functions physiologically as a neurotransmitter and as a hormone that causes vasodilatation at high concentrations however it combines with oxygen or with superoxide to form additional reactive and toxic species that contain both nitrogen and oxygen what do we call them reactive nitrogen oxygen species arnos and arnos are involved in parkinson disease and in chronic inflammatory diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis talking about the synthesis of nitric oxide if you remember we talked about nitric oxide when we started arginine metabolism so it is synthesized from arginine by nitric oxide synthase nos nitric oxide synthase is enzyme is there which is like cytochrome p450 enzyme and it uses iron heme fad and fmn to transfer single electrons from nadph to oxygen nos or nitric oxide synthase also requires the cofactor tetrahydrobiotarin and there are three different tissue specific isoforms of nitric oxide synthase each encoded by a different gene first is neuronal nos which is also called as n nos or isoform 1 second is inducible nitric oxide synthase or inos isoform 2 
and last but not the least is endothelial nitric oxide synthase that is ENOS or isoform 3. Neuronal nitric oxide synthase and endothelial NOS are tightly regulated by calcium concentration to produce the small amounts of nitric oxide required for its role as a neurotransmitter and hormone. On the other hand, inducible NOS is present in many cells of the immune system such as macrophages and brain astroglia and this particular isoenzyme of NOS that is inducible NOS is regulated principally by induction of gene transcription and not by changes in calcium concentration. So it produces high and toxic levels of nitric oxide to assist in killing invading microorganisms. So if you have a, uh, if one has a bacterial or fungal infection, uh, your inducible NOS is induced, gene transcription is increased and that will lead to formation of more of nitric oxide and uh, further formation of reactive nitrogen oxygen species to fight the infection. Now coming to the second physiological role or the normal role of free radical uh, is they act as cellular defense or a question generally asked to you in uh, university exams they, they, they take part in the free radicals take part in respiratory burst. So what happens in response to infectious agents and other stimuli phagocytic cells of the immune system that is neutrophils, eosinophils and macrophages they exhibit a rapid consumption of oxygen called the respiratory burst that is there is increased utilization of glucose via the pentose phosphate pathway to reduce NADP to NADPH and increased utilization of oxygen to oxidize NADPH to produce oxygen radicals as cytotoxic agents to kill phagocytosed microorganisms. So you need more of NADPH, so more of pentose phosphate pathway and more of glucose utilization and of course there is increased utilization of oxygen to oxidize this NADPH. Now this respiratory burst is a major source of superoxide radical, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl radical, hypochlorous acid and reactive nitrogen oxygen species. So there are five uh, things that are uh, being produced uh, in respiratory burst that is superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl radical, hypochlorous acid and arnos. So let us try to understand this figure how respiratory burst actually destroys the microorganism or what happens in respiratory burst. Uh, majorly two proteins are involved one is your NADPH oxidase and another is your myeloperoxidase. Now let's see how reactive oxygen species are produced during the phagocytic respiratory burst by activated neutrophils. So there is activation of NADPH oxidase on the outer side of the plasma membrane which initiates the respiratory burst with the generation of superoxide. During phagocytosis, the plasma membrane invaginates, so superoxide is released into the vacuole space. Now the superoxide either spontaneously or enzymatically via superoxide dismutase generates hydrogen peroxide. Now the granules containing myeloperoxidase are secreted into the phagosome where Myeloperoxidase generates hypochlorous acid, HOCl, and other halides. 
Now, this hydrogen peroxide formed in this step, it can also generate hydroxyl radical from the Fenton reaction. We'll see what is Fenton reaction in subsequent slide. And inducible nitric oxide synthase may be activated along with this to generate nitric oxide. So there is milieu of uh, free radicals or reactive oxygen species that are being formed to fight the infection, to kill the bacteria. Now, if your NOS is induced, it is activated, it is generating nitric oxide. This nitric oxide can combine with the superoxide to form peroxynitrate, which may generate additional RNOS. So eventually the result is an attack on the membranes and other components of phagocytosed cells and eventual lysis. The whole process is referred to as the respiratory burst because it lasts only 30 to 60 minutes and consumes oxygen. Now there is a clinical correlate here that genetic deficiency of any DPH oxidase it leads to uh, persistent and multiple infections. A patient presents to you with multiple infections which are like perennial kind of thing. It's a condition called chronic granulomatosis and there is a case history given at the end of uh, this presentation. You can go through it and uh, try to answer and we'll discuss it tomorrow. Now moving to the next slide, sources of free radicals. Reactive oxygen species are constantly being formed in the cell, approximately 3 to 5 percent of the oxygen, mind it, 3 to 5 percent of the oxygen that we consume is converted to oxygen free radicals. And daily production of ROS is about 1.5 mole. Some are produced as accidental byproducts of normal enzymatic reactions that escape from the active site of metal containing enzymes during oxidation reactions. Of course, you know when an enzymatic reaction is taking place, the substrate binds to the active site. So there are certain chemical, uh, co there is conformational change which is uh, there seen in the reaction. So if a radical is formed, there is a scope that this radical may escape from there and become a free radical and may start or propagate a chain reaction somewhere. So it's, it's a kind of side effect of the normal process that we have in our body. Now these are the sources of uh, free radicals. First is ionizing radiations. They have high enough energy that it can split water into hydroxyl and hydrogen radicals thus leading to radiation damage to the skin and other tissues. So UV rays, X-rays, these are damaging to the skin because they lead to free radical formation. And then transition metals including copper, cobalt and nickel and iron, they can react non-enzymatically with oxygen or hydrogen peroxide, again leading to formation of hydroxyl radicals. And this takes place through the Heberwiz reaction and the Fenton reaction. In the next slide, we'll talk about that. Nitric oxide, we have already said. ETC leaks means wherever there is electron flow of electrons, there is a chance there could be some leakage and uh, free electrons, I mean, uh, free uh, species that have free electrons are very much reactive and able to generate a chain reaction. And respiratory burst, we have already talked about it. Nitric oxide and respiratory burst, we talked about already. And uh, let's move to the next slide. These are the two reactions which are uh, necessary for you to know. First is Haberwee's reaction. And second is your Fenton reaction in which uh, your copper and iron take place. So there is generation of hydroxyl radical 
by the non enzymatic heberwies and fenton reaction so these are simplified versions of these reactions shown here the transfer of single electrons generates the hydroxyl radical so a superoxide radical and a hydrogen peroxide molecule are combining uh, with transfer of a single electron into it to give oxygen water and hydroxyl radical and in fenton reaction uh, in addition to iron and copper many other metals can serve as single electron donor in the fenton reaction leading to formation of again hydroxyl radical and hydroxide ion so these are also two sources of generation of free radicals which take place through non enzymatic route and taking help of transition metals now uh what are the now in this slide we'll see what are the effects of free radicals on cells i mean why are we so worried about uh, free radicals so uh this is the hydroxyl radical super oxide radical so uh, superoxide and the hydroxyl radical they initiate lipid peroxidation in the cellular mitochondrial nuclear and endoplasmic reticular membranes so there is a uh, lipid peroxidation in the membrane and what is the effect of this the the, the increase in cellular permeability there is increase in cellular permeability which results in an influx of calcium so there is massive influx of calcium which causes further mitochondrial damage so what happened these superoxide radical and hydroxyl radical they formed lipid peroxides they distorted the structure of the membrane of mitochondria or the cellular plasma membrane and uh, membrane uh, of endoplasmic reticulum that led to increased permeability so ions can move in there is massive influx of calcium there is um, uh, the, there is water movement so that leads to uh, swelling of the cell and what happens there is uh, the cysteine sulfhydryl groups and other amino acid residues on protein are oxidized and they are degraded and oxidative damage to tyrosine residues in proteins can lead to formation of dihydroxyphenylalanine which can undergo non enzymatic reactions leading to further formation of oxygen radicals chemical modification of amino acids in protein either by direct radical action or as a result of reaction with the products of uh, radical induced lipid peroxidation this leads to proteins that are recognized as non self by the immune system so a protein which had uh, certain epitopes to it uh, the its its chemistry has been somewhat changed now so it will be recognized as a new entity by the immune system and if it is new it is foreign to the body it could be attacked by the immune system that is how it leads to uh, development of autoimmune disorders in uh, nuclear and mitochondrial dna that could be oxidized by free, these free radicals or ros resulting in strand breaks and other types of damage and minded radical damage to dna in germline cells in ovaries and testes it can lead to heritable mutations and in somatic cells the result may be initiation of cancer or tumor now let's see what is the effect of uh, these oxidants or free radicals on lipids they are lipids are most susceptible to damage and uh, radical damage to unsaturated fatty acids in cell membranes and plasma lipoproteins leads to the formation of lipid peroxides 
then highly reactive dialdehydes that can chemically modify proteins and nucleic acid bases for example malone dialdehyde mda and uh, it has been uh, seen that mda levels are uh, increased in certain disorders like atherosclerosis i mean much research has been done on mda levels and mda levels are actually done to estimate uh, as a measure of uh, you know oxidative stress in the body and in the next slide i'll sh i'm showing you here the four stages of uh, lipid peroxidation so there is uh, there are four stages initiation propagation degradation and termination you really don't need to dwell into details of it but i'll just touch upon this here briefly so lipid peroxidation is initiated by a hydroxyl radical or other radical that extracts a hydrogen atom from a polyunsaturated lipid thus forming a lipid radical donated uh, designated as l dot here now this free radical l dot this free radical uh, chain reaction is propagated by reaction with oxygen forming the lipid peroxy radical this loo dot and lipid peroxide that is looh sorry so this is the, it was initiated with hydroxyl radical propagated by propagated when this lipid radical combined with oxygen or lipid radical combined with another lipid to form lipid peroxy radical and lipid peroxide now in the next step there is rearrangement of the single electron which results in degradation of the lipid to form a degraded lipid peroxide and malone dialdehyde or mda that is one of the compounds formed and is soluble and appears in blood last is when this reaction terminates or the termination reaction uh, the chain reaction can be terminated by reduced vitamin e if you see here vitamin e in the reduced form this can terminate the reaction and also other lipid soluble antioxidants that donate single electrons and uh, in proteins damage to proteins the amino acids proline histidine arginine cysteine and methionine these are particularly susceptible to hydroxyl radical attack and oxidative damage and as a consequence of oxidative damage the protein may fragment or residues may cross link with other residues and free radical attack on protein cysteine residues can result in cross linking and formation of aggregates that prevents their degradation for example chemical modification of the proteins in plasma ldl it leads to formation of abnormal ldl that is not recognized by the liver ldl receptors and so it is not cleaved by the liver the modified ldl is taken up by macrophage scavenger receptors now these lipid and gorged macrophages infiltrate under blood vessel epithelium especially when there is already some damage to the endothelium and these are killed by high content of unesterified cholesterol they have accumulated so this this happens in the development of atherosclerotic plaques or atherosclerosis now you can see how uh, changing the uh, plasma ldl chemistry by free radical injury could lead to formation of uh, could lead to uh, atherogenesis second example that i'll give you here is free radical attack and oxidation of cysteine sulfhydryl residues of the tripeptide glutathione so free radical attack increases oxidative damage throughout the cell and you already know that glutathione is a major component of cellular defense against free radical injury and its oxidation reduces its protective effects 
on nucleic acid so uh, free radicals and nucleic acid they actually lead to chain breaks and base alterations and x rays and gamma rays can induce formation of uh, reactive oxygen species that are mutagenic and probably contribute to the carcinogenic effects of radiant energy also the non specific binding of uh, ferrous ion to dna facilitates localized production of the hydroxyl radical which can cause base alterations in the dna a very good example here is uh, conversion of guanine to 8 hydroxy guanine by the hydroxyl radical so the amount of 8 hydroxy guanosine present in cells can be used to estimate the amount of oxidative damage they have sustained so the addition of hydroxyl group to guanine allows it to miss pair with adenine residues at a low frequency leading to the creation of a daughter molecule with an adenine thymine base pair in this position again a question here for you as compared to uh, our nuclear dna mitochondrial dna is more susceptible to damage by ionization radiation or free radical uh, it is more susceptible to injury why so please ponder over it now i think we are done with the various uh, free radicals or oxidants and uh, we'll move to cellular defenses against oxygen toxicity and broadly they are called as antioxidants but enzymes are categorized separately and uh, the various molecules that are scavengers of free radicals are called antioxidants and uh, so these are the uh, various categories of uh, your cellular defenses against oxygen toxicity you have antioxidant defense enzymes then you have non enzymatic antioxidants uh, which uh, which are uh, rad free radical scavengers and include dietary and, and, and uh, endogenous antioxidants vitamins of course then cellular compartmentation metal sequestration and repair of damaged cellular components so in uh, types we can say enzymes are taking uh, uh, have a function there are certain enzyme there are certain vitamins and then there are other dietary antioxidants and uh, minerals as such uh, in the form of uh, being present in the enzyme they take part in cellular defense against oxidative stress so starting with enzymes these are uh, there are three set of enzymes called um, superoxide dismutase catalase and third is glutathione peroxidase or we can combine it as glutathione peroxidase and reductase so uh, let's start with superoxide dismutase and uh, we call it sod and uh, this is the first line of defense against superoxide radicals conversion of superoxide anion to hydrogen peroxide and oxygen that is conversion of superoxide anion to hydrogen peroxide and oxygen this dismutation by superoxide dismutase is often called the primary defense against oxidative stress because superoxide is such a strong initiate uh, in uh, it can initiate a strong chain of reaction and uh, it exists in three isoenzyme forms sod uh, there is a copper zinc form present in the cytosol there is a manganese form present in mitochondria and a copper zinc form found extracellularly and activity of uh, copper zinc sod is increased by chem uh, chemicals or conditions that increase the production of superoxide moving to the next enzyme in line it is catalase so hydrogen peroxide once formed it must be reduced to water to prevent it from 
forming the hydroxyl radical in Fenton reaction or the Heberwitz reaction and this this particular function is performed by catalase. Catalase is princip found principally in peroxisomes and to a lesser extent in uh, cytosol and microsomal fraction of the cell and the highest, con uh, highest activities are found in tissues with a high peroxisomal content that is kidney and liver. And in cells of the immune system, catalase serves to protect the cell against its own respiratory burst. Now, glutathione peroxidase, uh, you must have had re read in uh, Microminerals when you read about selenium that uh, it contains glutathione peroxidase is one enzyme which contains selenium. And uh, in reactions that are catalyzed by glutathione peroxidases, the reactive sulfhydryl groups, they reduce hydrogen peroxide to water and lipid peroxides to non-toxic alcohols. In these reactions, two glutathione molecules, if you can see here, two glutathione molecules to reduce glutathione molecules are oxidized to form a single molecule glutathione disulfide. So this SS is a disulfide linkage. So two molecules have been oxidized to form a single molecule and they have reduced hydrogen peroxide to form water. And once oxidized glutathione is formed, it must be reduced back to the sulfhydryl form by glutathione reductase in a redox cycle which involves FAD and NADPH. And we all know that NADPH ka source kya hai hamare paas? Pentose phosphate pathway. Now enzymes are finished. Anti, uh, uh, coming to vitamins. We already have talked about uh, uh, antioxidant vitamins in our uh, series of lecture that I took for you for vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin A. And most free radical scavengers are antioxidants, compounds that neutralize free radicals by donating a hydrogen atom with its one electron to the radical. And antioxidants therefore reduce free radicals and are themselves oxidized in the reaction. So they include vitamin E which is lipid soluble, vitamin C which is water soluble, carotenoids and flavonoids. Now this slide, this uh, figure I have taken from uh, uh, Harper 30th edition and it's a beautiful uh, diagram to show the uh, interplay between vitamin E and vitamin C. Uh, one is lipid soluble and another is water soluble. So if you can see here, this polyunsaturated fatty acid present in phospholipid of membrane, there is there is generation of uh, there is generation of peroxyl radical. Once this free radical R dot came here, so it combined with PUFA to form peroxyl radical of PUFA in membrane phospholipid, and this could go on to have a chain reaction. Now see the role of vitamin E here. This tocopherol TOCOH vitamin E this is alpha tocopherol. Now this donates the electron for this reaction and this peroxyl radical is reduced to hydroxy peroxy PUFA in membrane phospholipid. It is released into the cytosol as hydroxy peroxy PUFA by the action of phospholipase A2. Now if you see coming back to here this alpha tocopherol it gives electron to peroxyl radical of PUFA and itself gets oxidized to tocopheroxyl radical. This TOCO dot is tocopheroxyl radical. Now to regenerate alpha tocopherol from this tocopheroxyl radical at this interface of 
membrane and cytosol we have vitamin c we have ascorbic acid which can reduce this functional form of vitamin e and itself gets oxidized and to regenerate reduced ascorbic acid from oxidized vitamin c we take help of glutathione here and now coming to here that is uh, pufa hydroxy peroxy pufa which had migrated to cytosol along with uh, there is presence of uh, hydrogen peroxide so this uh, this can also lead to generation of further free radicals so you should focus on here what is the role of vitamin e it is lipid soluble how it can lead to termination of this uh, reaction here that is uh, free radical formation from polyunsaturated fatty acid and how it is regenerated with the help of vitamin c and vitamin c vitamin e is the major lipid soluble antioxidant in cell membranes and plasma lipoproteins and the main function of uh, vitamin e is as a chain breaking free radical trapping antioxidant in cell membranes and plasma lipoproteins how by reacting with lipid peroxide radicals formed by peroxidation of pufa so this tocopheroxyl radical is relatively unreactive and ultimately forms non radical compounds and uh, commonly the tocopheroxyl radical is reduced back to tocopherol by reaction with vitamin c from plasma and the resultant stable monodehydroascorbate radical then undergoes enzymic or non enzymic reaction to yield ascorbate and dehydroascorbate neither of which is a radical now about minerals they work along with enzymes only and uh, for superoxide dismutase yes we talked about there are three isoforms and they require copper zinc and manganese and selenium is the uh, micro mineral which you require for activity of glutathione peroxidase and amongst miscellaneous uh, uh, molecules which take part as uh, your defense against free radical injury they include certain proteins celluloplasmin transferrin uh, then cystin sulfhydryl group bilirubin uric acid which is a degradation product of uh, uh, purine metabolism and uh, it is released it, it acts as a good reducing agent and it is present in good quantity in uh, saliva blood plasma and melatonin again uh, which maintains your uh, circadian rhythm it is also a good reducing agent and all of these they have some role to play in phagocytosis now uh, i have summarized here that uh, to tackle a reactive species reactive oxygen species or arnos what antioxidant you have so uh, sorry there is a spelling no that's fine superoxide free radical and hydroxyl free radical how do you uh, how do you balance them uh, with the help of uh, superoxide dismutase vitamin e and ver various retinoids hydrogen peroxide is uh, broken down or uh, ultimately water is formed by the action of catalase and glutathione peroxidase helps it and lipid peroxide glutathione peroxidase again and peroxy free radicals are uh, terminated by vitamin c and vitamin e now in this table i have enumerated various diseases or disorders that are associated with free radical injury please go through this table you need to know four five disorder so parkinson disease there is inability to convert tyrosine to dopa and you can give dopa treatment and uh, free radicals have been implicated in uh, uh, in uh, precipitating parkinson disease but uh, i mean there are various theories and then myocardial inf uh, infarction uh, what happens when there is damage to the heart muscle you uh, you do a uh, 
there is a free radical generation once you reperfuse the muscle you give oxygen to the muscle to the cells which have been temporarily ischemic so that leads to uh, matlab that supplies oxygen to the uh, cells which were dying of hypoxia but also it leads to ischemic reperfusion injury and then chronic granulomatous disease which occurs because of reduced activity of nadph oxidase and uh, there is reduction in oxidative burst or respiratory burst by neutrophils so there is a dysregulated immune response to various infections and uh, about uh, age related macular degeneration so uh, with aging the retinal pigment epithelium it is oxidatively damaged and it leads to reduced vision and maybe to blindness so to summarize this lecture uh, oxygen radical generation it leads to cellular death and degeneration in a variety of disease and uh, radical damage occurs by via, via electron extraction from a biologic molecule creating a chain reaction which propagates rapidly and ros includes superoxide anion hydrogen peroxide hydroxyl radical and they could be produced ros could be produced enzymatically or non enzymatically and they have very good potential of oxidatively damaging dna proteins and lipids leading to mutation and development of cancer or tumor the other uh, radical species include nitric oxide and uh, hypochlorous hypochlorous acid and nitrogen oxide how does it actually lead to free radical injury it reacts with oxygen or superoxide to form a family of rnos and uh, the immune response normally produces radical species that is what we call as respiratory burst and your cellular defense mechanisms include superoxide dismutase catalase and glutathione peroxidase and antioxidant vitamins include vitamin e c certain carotenoids and flavonoids and uh, this is the case history go through it and uh, try to answer the questions the powerpoint is with you and uh, so i have mentioned the references at the end of the uh, slides and there are certain uh, there are few assignment questions which you should try and i'll get back to you tomorrow afternoon and uh, please be ready with your doubts and i end the session here thank you so much